I've just recently graduated from the University of Wales Trinity St David with a BA Honours in Social Studies and I'm now undertaking a Master's at the same university in Equity and Diversity. Um, on top of that, <laughs> I've just recently become the District Commissioner for Girl Guiding in Llanelli. I'm organising the Llanelli Pride event and I'm currently undertaking the Agile Nation 2 um, women's programme through what I did. I'm dyslexic and I'm dyspraxic and whilst I liked school, um, I never really, in teacher's words, performed my potential. I've always regretted not going to university, didn't think that I could do it actually um, and then when I was 40 I decided I wanted to do something for myself. All the students got assessed for um, any specific learning difficulties and of course dyspraxia and dyslexia came out for me but also ADD which was a bit of a shock. I thought right okay now that I've been labelled I'm kind of going to throw that label right back at them and prove that I can do it. And I'm quite proud of my achievement, actually, yeah. Everybody has got something to give and everybody has got something to offer. And if it's going back to university or getting an education or just, even if it's not because you want to advance your career, but just that you want to do something for yourself, to just do it. As ops manager for a large factory, I'm responsible for basically the sterilisation and the washing of medical device implants, which is really crazy and exciting. So every day is a school day, and it really is. This does it really is every single day, minute is just something new. You know, there's a lot of theory to learn. Um, you know, production moving throughout the factory. It was just so much to learn. This role's never been done by a woman before. Um, certainly not one of my age. I had like no ops experience whatsoever previously, so um, I was in purchasing and supply chain before, which is so wildly different. When my um, now boss asked me to do the role, I was like, oh, I'm just going to have to think about it, you know, and I went home and I was like, no, no chance, like, <laughs> there's no chance I could stand up in these rooms like full of men, you know, they've been doing their job for years and years, they've got this experience and knowledge, and I always thought, I was really scared about that, but the next day I slept over it and I was just thought, no way, like, I've got to do it, it's really exciting. So, yeah, just kind of jumped in really, but yeah, it was completely scary being, um, like, the youngest um, person on that management team, a youngest person ever to have the role, and then being a woman as well, it was kind of like a double whammy really. The way that you handle different situations and problems, like your experience, even if it's not in a particular sector, like your experience can be valuable wherever you come from. So you don't have to stick to one path, you can try new things. I just say my advice would just be just to go for it. You'll add value, just get stuck in, work hard and yeah, you'll enjoy it. I am a forensic science graduate. I graduated last year. I've come back to do a postgrad teaching qualification, a PGCE, and I'm starting my master's in forensic anthropology and bioarchaeology in September. It's been really, really challenging because um, I have to spend two full days a week in lectures learning how to be a teacher, which is a completely different type of science. And then I've had to fit in my um, teaching hours. I, f I felt like a bit like a fish out of water for a while, but I'm, I'm kind of used to it now. I lived in addiction for many years. Um, I went into, I lost everything, um, a previous career, ev everything I had. Um, I came into recovery when I was 30. And for a while, I was working as a recovery worker in the drug and alcohol services, but I got made redundant. Um, by that time I had a little bit of belief in myself that I could actually achieve dreams of when I was a child because I'd always been interested in forensics and things like that. I was really proud walking over that stage um, to, to get my degree and with my mum watching and being so proud considering like where we've come from or you know she never thought that would ever happen. I'm doing it because my story can help other people I know that you know if there's somebody sitting sitting at home who's feeling uninspired or unmotivated or that they, you know, they just, even if it just means that, you know, they can go and get help for any addictions or, or anything really. The sun always shines and I think that, I honestly believe that if I hadn't have been where I'd been, I wouldn't be where I am now. So anyone who's struggling can use their ex experience of being in that dark place and I think that's where, that's where hope is born really. 
At the moment, I'm doing a master's degree in criminology and advanced criminal law. I've always believed, you know, been a firm, staunch believer that it, it, the truth it will set you free. I had a child when I was 16. You know, I, then I married somebody who was very violent. I was suffering quite severe mental health problems. I was sitting there telling my children that they could be whatever they wanted to be. I knew that at some point when they started understanding what, what I was actually saying, they would say to me, that's all very well, but why aren't you? And so for that reason, I had to do something. I absolutely believed I could and, and would be successful at studying law. When I was in my second year, my sister was told she had liver cancer. She was only 53. Uh, and so she came then to live with me. I was sitting in this very room as it goes, and um, a message came. You know, I knew what that meant, you know. My sister then passed away on the 9th. Nothing, nothing could have been worse than that. My sister was the one person in the whole world that actually believed I could do it. So I'm going to do a bank in leadership. I'm going to do a leadership award to, you know, um, work with vulnerable adults. I said, I'm going to do a level five. I'm going to open my own business. I'm going to make sure that the correct care is given to our elderly. This is the advice I give to people consider, uh, considering learning. Just keep going, but one step at a time. Don't foresee, don't look too far. Don't think what might be. Just keep going.